Shilpa Patel, welcome to Empower Network TV. Uh, this is going to be a fun interview. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to being interviewed. Tammy and I are looking forward to this too. And for those on ENTV watching, why is there two interviewers interviewing Shilpa? Well, because she's very special. And also because we have a Catapult program and a Catapult Plus program going where you're going to be seeing a number of interviews where there's two interviewers interviewing one person. And so far, Tammy, how would you say this is your fourth or fifth? Have you enjoyed this process of double interviewing people? Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting because sometimes you'll think of something and then I can like, oh yeah, I can go a little deeper with that one. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I didn't see that coming. So we're going to have fun today asking Shilpa questions about the soles of the feet, as Tammy coined it before we went live. So Shilpa Patel, can you set it up for people and let them know kind of as a podiatrist, a little of your story and then dovetailing into what you're doing now in the psychic realm with energy and all that, anywhere you want to start it. And then we'll ask questions as we go. Does that work? Yeah, that works for me. Please. Okay. Welcome here. So I, I am a podiatrist, have been for about 20 years, and I'm a holistic therapist, a spiritual reflexologist, and a energy healer, intuitive energy healer. So I tend to integrate my work, the podiatry aspect, uh, if there are problems, chronic pain with the feet, for example, I can then bring in a holistic point of view and with the healing um, that usually helps to resolve whatever the problem is so I'm, I'm uh, inclined to work more on a spiritual level now looking at the the emotion and the memory that's stuck within that pain so it could be anywhere in the body it could be in the souls it could be anywhere so it's uh it's like feelings and memories that get stuck so deep that there are no medical answers and we i go in and i kind of with the client it's teamwork and we explore what's going on let's go a bit into that so something traumatic happens on any level of trauma any type of trauma what is physiologically happening in the body energetically when trauma gets stuck in the cells? What does that look like? What ensues? Why is that even a thing? It's a thing because it's an emotion, a feeling that's that gets so trapped in the body. It's a feeling that hasn't been dealt with. Sometimes we don't even know there is that we don't know what's going on all we know is there's a pain there's a pain and we don't know what's going on why it's there we've tried everything uh had all the tests done and you know the doctors come back and say well there's nothing wrong but you've still got a pain so when a client comes to me i take a detailed history and I start getting alarm bells to make note of things. And then um, I just ask questions. I love to talk when I'm working with a client because it gives me such a big picture of what's going on with them. And so that gives me an idea where and what I need to look at. Hey, keep going. Let's keep, <laughs> let's keep going deeper. So what happens next? You ask questions, they tell yeah. you answers. What else are you listening for? Well, I will at the same time connect with my guides and they will connect with the client's guidance. They communicate, they send me information and then I just ask the client what's going on did this happen? You know, what happened between this phase of your life between, let's say, uh, five and 15? And there may be some issues going on at school or something going on at home. It's a memory that got stuck in the body. So we go back 
to that time period and do some healing. Now, um, I think it was last year I was given a gift of healing. It's called access point healing. And I do that a lot with my clients and I work with feelings and trauma, anything that's deep like PTSD, we will go in and explore and then heal it at that level. So let's say a five-year-old got, you know, an emotional thing with someone said something to her and it got stuck. And then they end up with, let's say, asthma, for example. Um, sometimes there's no answers. And we go back and we explore this and we heal it at that level when someone had said something to them. And then you move them along the timeline and there's nothing, they don't feel anything. They, they, they just, they're okay. And it's just such an amazing feeling. So I'll give you an example of this gentleman that came and he's all bubbly, things going on. I'm getting the feeling this, I need a way in. You know, he's telling me what I want to hear, but what's going on deeper? So I just said to my team, let's find a way in. I need something here. And suddenly the man said something. And I said, yes, that's where we're going. We went back to when he was a youngster. Something had happened to him. And I brought in the healing that I was given to work with this client. And he was literally sitting on my couch with tears just releasing that trauma, the memory. And uh, at the end of his session, he just said to me, I love what you do. I want to do what you do. And it just helped to release that deep-seated trauma that was affecting him now, feeling undervalued, unappreciated. And he could see why that, had come up that, those feelings. So all these feelings that come up, it could be from our past lives, it could be from our childhood, it could even be ancestral, the patterns that happen to the ancestors which weren't healed at that level. So then we come in, we do the healing here and now, and that affects, helps the healing process going back generations. So it's, a, it's very intuitively that I work and I'll, I'll just get guided. This is what we need to do. So each session, each person is always different. I never quite know what's going to come in. Tammy. Yes. So did you, um, when you were switching from being a regular podiatrist to doing it spiritually, was there something that like, triggered that is there something that said hey Shilpa you would need to do this I've always been guided even going into reflexology it was like you need to do something different and I'm like what do I do what is different there's so much out there and then someone spoke to me about reflexology back uh, about 30 years ago and th at that time there were hardly 2000 reflexologists then. So I was guided to do that. Um, and I started integrating, looking at the podiatry angle of let's say someone with a heel pain. And then I, as a reflexologist, I would just switch hats and see what's going on and how best I could provide the service for this client. So then I was just guided along the path there's always something and I get this inner knowing that there's something I need to do something different and look at something else and as soon as I connect with the client I'll be shown an image or something visual and then when I relay it to my client they'll say yeah that that makes sense that's so interesting it's so interesting like to take something that's like regular but 
put a twist on it and make it your own and make it something that's a little bit, I've never heard of such a thing. It's fantastic. I know a lot of people who could probably go for a foot thing and come out there feeling, you know, like completely like a different person. Yeah. I I went through this myself uh, with my second pregnancy. I had plantar fasciitis on both my feet. And so I knew what the cause was, but then I thought, okay, I need to find a solution. So I, I integrated the reflexology and the healing Reiki at the time, and I started feeling a difference. So it was through my own experiences, I started tailoring my sessions for people who had heel pain. So now that's what I do. I provide um, a solution that is tried and tested with me. And other examples of my life when I've needed surgery and I've gone back to the healing and the holistic therapy, I've never had to go under a knife. You know, no surgeries. I've healed myself. And so it's through my own examples that I share my my work with with the many people who come to me. In fact, I've uh, I just uh, written a book on that, uh, the self-healing. It's a self-healing aspect. It's uh, my life's experiences and with sciatica at a very young age. Uh, in my late teens, I had sciatica, and in the early days, there were, there, there wasn't that much, you know, the answers weren't there. There was limitation on the medical aspect as to what you could do, and it's how my mum helped me, and then through the holistic therapies, I started working on myself, and then exchanging with colleagues. And now I can say I am pain-free from sciatica or the sacroiliac joint dysfunction where I needed surgery. And I I didn't. I didn't go through with it. I am pain-free because of the holistic therapies and having a belief in myself. And I know that we are all healers. Mm -hmm. And given half the chance, we can heal ourselves. Sure, Shilpa, I wanted to jump in here. Um, you said two statements. One, you said, you know, we're all healers. Well, we know physiologically in, in our body, if I cut my arm, my arm heals itself. So some people would say we're we're a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. So like our meat suit. So spirit, soul, body. And your training taught you, the medical community, teaches to heal from the outside it addresses this, but you're going now from spirit, soul, body. So when you tap into spiritual things, so, and then if some people say the soul is the mind, will, and emotions, and then the body, so you're healing from the soul out. I am. You're tapping into spirit, which is which is healing soul stuff, which then affects the body as opposed to trying to fix the spirit or soul by going to the meat suit first, which Absolutely. does that ever work? So what are your thoughts on that? Cause as Tammy pointed out, you were trained to heal from the outside in, but you're now healing from the inside out. I've always looked for answers. I, I am not uh, conventional. I'm, I do, I do my own thing. I have the background uh, in the medical side of things. And I appreciate that there's a need for that. However, sometimes when people come to me and they don't have solutions, then I ask the bigger question as to, okay, what else can I do? How else can I look at this? And so when I'm open to asking these questions, I get guided to look at different things in a different way. So it's a combination, an integration of the medical and the spiritual is where I come from. So yes, there there are, you know, avenues where you do need medical intervention. 
But if we can tap into our own inert healing abilities and heal something, and we don't need to then go on to have any intervention, I think that's a, that's a really powerful way to be. Definitely. You know, while you're just talking, it was coming to me, both things about feet, heal and soul, both have to do with the feet. That's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. because we, we, we are not just the physical body. We are an emotional, mental and spiritual body. So if we are not listening to whatever is coming in, it's going to create issues in the other bodies. And if they're not treated, it will affect us at a physical level. So then we've got to go inside out, treat the physical. But if you can't treat the physical, there's got to be an emotional, a mental aspect to a problem. So we've got to look at that as well. So you treat the whole person, not just the heels. I have a question. What would you, how do you, you know, some people are, okay, I've done a lot of interviews this last year. My belief system has changed in the last 14 months because the amount of people that have come forward, that even though I've only interviewed, I think we're up to 400 now in 14 months, but there's too many people now that are coming out and saying, listen, I, I follow my intuition. Um, they often verbiage it as either intuition or their their team of guides, angels. Raised, I was raised in a Judeo Christian background, and I still align with that to some degree. Though I'm not a fan of boxes, period, because it's typically control mechanisms. But I, I everything I've built in in ENTV and this. That's how I get everything. I get shown what to do. I get these, I get shown, I get told what to do. And I've, I've changed the way I verbiage that being, being shown what to do, the practicality of it being downloaded or shown to me. What do you say to people that they don't have a reference point? So they're neither religious. And so they can't even reference angels, even helping them, let's say, or guides or spirits, whatever, or they have no history in their life where they ever have felt like they've received intuition, inner knowing, how would you encourage them to maybe explore that there might possibly be forces that want them to succeed and want them to be well, to be healed, to be whole, to be sound of mind and to be prosperous in all forms. How do you start that conversation? I I would just say to them, go with the gut feeling. Whatever feels right is the answer because your body is a barometer and it knows when something is right and when something is wrong. Yeah? So I'll give you an example. My daughter the other day, she said to me, Mom, I've got this feeling in my tummy that something isn't going to be good today it turned out there was something going on at work and she already tuned into that she just felt it so your body knows when something is right or wrong or when you know you have this knowing that you need to try something you may not know what it is but you have that feeling that you just got to do something different so that's when you trial and error different things and something is going to work. Something will resonate or that right person will come along. And, you know, that that's when it works. It's just, it just is. But you've got to be open. It's when you're closed up, then nothing works. Yeah, I mean, how does that, leave that door open? And there's so many possibilities. Shilpa, what you're saying right here, Tammy, how is this hitting you? Because you're in the middle of, over the last, not just right now, but previously too, you've 
following intuition to right follow your le- yellow brick road to lead you home or to heaven on earth yeah. how is what shilpa is saying hitting you yeah it's that's that's the thing you do have to be open and that's the first that's to me that's the first key if you're if you're open and willing then things can come to you but if you're not then then they don't because <laughs> there's you know the the blocks within the self just um keep that your your brain can't cognize cognize it it can't it can't receive anything because it's it's already said no yeah and that that's when you end up having surgery or you know there's no guarantees with that either you know it's it's hit or miss most of the times um but what i bring is an alternative or another way to try before going that final route. I, I'm not totally against surgery. Well, there is a need for it eventually if nothing else works, but give something else a chance. You never know, you might not need that, you know? And it this just works. Well, for myself, I've been through a lot of um, traumas and illnesses and things, and I only recently have figured out all of all of this. And I know from doing my own healing and my inner journey, um, had I been more open and uh, had some resources, things would have gone a lot differently. I'm I'm positive of that. And yeah, like surgeries, uh, an end game sort of if if it's not you know if it's maybe too late or if it's a little you know we have um waited until it's exacerbated into a huge problem but if you catch things at the beginning and you're aware like you said you have to be um you have to feel and know that something's going wrong and not just be blocking it all the time because as soon as you start blocking it the same with your intuition you don't know you don't feel it and next thing you know you have cancer or who knows what any other disease right yeah absolutely it's it's your inner guidance system and it's never gonna see you wrong let's say you're going down the uh motorway for example and then suddenly in your head you hear this not this voice saying just go don't stop don't look just go and then as you, soon as you've passed something happens behind you that is just following your inner guidance system I, I had a, a lady who came in with, uh, so she needed surgery for her eyes and she had four weeks before the surgery. And I just tapped into doing the reflexology, the healing for her. And this was done through distant reflexology. I, like we are, but I tune in to her energy and I work with these plastic feet that I have and those to me represent her feet. And I saw her twice a week. And at the fourth session, I said to her, look, get your pressure checked out. And she started off with a 47 pressure. It went down to 27. And then a week before her surgery, when she went for her pre-op checkup, I said, I said to her, insist on having your pressure checked again. And when she did, it had gone down to 20 and her surgery got cancelled. So we had four weeks and it worked. But there were a lot of emotions attached to this as well. So when you're working with the emotion, emotional and mental level, it helps to clear something. Something just triggers in the body's healing system and it just starts to heal itself again. Okay, so people coming out of, okay, so in my opinion, Shilpa, the human experience, the human game is is learning to come out of bondage in all forms of bondage, social bondage, mental, emotional. And I find the worst, the hardest bondage for me to come out of is the bondage I put myself under with self-imposed beliefs and and all the all the things I defined as truth because they were taught to me to believe is true. And I never questioned, 
So how do we begin to unravel truth from fiction when we start seeing the evidence stack up that perhaps I'm not as right as I thought I was and my belief constructs might need to be challenged more than I thought they'd need to be. How do you give yourself permission to get out of your paddock and open the gate and start roaming around outside of the field you grew up in? How do you do that? So again, be open. Be open to the possibility that these may be someone else's belief systems and we've taken them on board. So I have a process where I take the person back uh, to those memories, the first time they may have felt something. And that's where we go in and we do the healing. And then going forward, those beliefs are either less in intensity or they're not there. But it's just, you've got to be open that there is something. You know you know that there are beliefs that are affecting you. Mm -hmm. And so tuning into those, just sitting with them and just tune into them, see what they feel like. Where do they feel? You know, where do you feel it in your body? And then those will usually correspond with the pain that you have. And so that's that's a, a great indicator that if you have something going on, chronic pain or trauma or whatever it is, that needs to be worked on. Cami, do you want to wrap up the interview here? Oh my. Um, let me see. Do I have anything else I want to ask? So you did say, you said that you can do it remotely, which is really awesome. I I like that. Um, I don't know. What else could I say? <laughs> well, I can talk about my <laughs> book, my experiences. Oh, yeah, your book. Yes, you must tell us at least a little bit. Well, it's, it's, a, it's called My Life Experiences, Stepping Stones to Healing. So how I got into the journey and then how I healed my sciatica, uh, the sacroiliac joint dysfunction, the plantar fasciitis, uh, a few other things, and how I helped my clients as well. So we're going from working to a holistic therapist to opening up to spirituality and the awakening that I had when my father was dying and I got an image of God waiting for him. And to me, that just was really peaceful to know that that's in good hands. So I use a lot of my spiritual uh, training guidance that comes in. I work with the masters. I'm open to working with any guides that comes in. I'm not specific to the Hindu gods. I am Hindu, but... I work with Jesus, I work with Kuan Yin, I work with Buddha, Mother Mary. Whoever comes in, they will have the highest guidance for whoever I'm working with. And so my job is to just deliver the message to the person it's meant for. And so this is, the, the book talks about my journey from working in retail to where I am now and how I was given my gifts back by my father, who's, uh, who's upstairs now in spirit. But when I asked him why now, so this was in 2019, and he said to me, we had to close those down for you because it wasn't safe for you. So I was born in Africa, in Tanzania, and I guess I was special. I had these gifts but to show them to live with them day in day out and you know if people saw that I would be in danger so they just shut things down for me until 2019 and then dad came in and he re-gifted me these 
gift. So um, it's quite a funny experience. Uh, my brother passed in 2018. And then I said to him, I'll talk to you in a year's time. I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> and a uh, couple of days after his anniversary, my son and I were having breakfast in the morning. And I said to him, it's time Mama. So Mama is my brother. But ha that's how my son would refer to him. And I said, it's time Mama comes through and gives us a sign. And next thing you know, my tea tasted like aftershave. So when I spoke to his wife and his son, and they go, yeah, that's dad. He loved his aftershave, and he just splashed on half a bottle every time we went out. So he, he's one of my guides as well, as is my, my dad, my mum, and my sister. So, yeah. The, so this is what I talk about in my book. Well, your book sounds kind of like what, you know, how Amos was pointing out you know, the outside, the inside and the inner, it, your journey has been that too. Yeah. And now you're like, you're the inside and you're connected, you know, through there. Yes. It's awesome that your loved ones come through too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're a constant, constantly around guiding me. So I, I get more guidance from them than I do from people down here. <laughs> Shilpa, um, Tammy, I'm glad you didn't wrap the interview up where I suggested thanks for ignoring that because you did the right call shilpa i wanted to um say thank you so much for being so brave and thank you. for and when you said you know you're hindu but yeah. you're i admire that because i was raised christian and this last year has taught me to that some of those things i was taught at least some of those things i was taught was, can, um, I, can I share share something? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is amazing. So when I was doing some spiritual work one time, and I in my meditation I went up there, a door opened up. I walked in. It was all white, and then I felt this energy, and it was Jesus, but it was just white, color white. And then he said to me, come in and I'll introduce you to the team. So I said, okay, I I'm pretty open for these things. And then he said to me, look, there's uh, Lakshmi there. And then there's uh, Buddha. And then there's um, Saraswati. And then there's Isis. And oh, nice. And he said to me, let me show you around. So he's showing me around the room. And then on the hooks, he said to me, this, these are the uniforms that we wear when we come down to earth, because this is how you recognize us. But up here, we are all the same. So that, that white room had all the energies were white, but it, they, they put on the robes or the, the, the jewelry or the headgear or whatever it is they need to wear to show us who they are. But to me, whoever comes in has a higher purpose, higher uh, message to share. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to hold back and say, oh, because I'm Hindu, I'm not going to share that message. It's for the greater good of this planet, for the humanity, for unity. You know, it's it's because we're all one. Mm. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank nope. you. Thank you for having me here. I've loved talking about this. Thank you. Well, if you've been watching on ENTV, you've been listening to Shilpa Patel. Tammy Scarlett and I have a very intriguing conversation. Please reach out to Shilpa. She'll drop her links in the comments after. And uh, trust and hope that you got something brilliant and beautiful and inspiring out of this conversation today. Thank you, Tammy. And thank you, Shilpa, for being a guest on ENTV thank today. Thank you for having me. It's been lovely. Okay, we'll call it here.